Hi, I'm Tim. Joining me in this video, I'm going to show you a technique to adjust control throw distances using mechanical linkages. In other words, no computer radio. Let's get to it. We use radio control sets, obviously, to put inside our model airplane the purpose of the radio is to provide movement so the control surfaces, elevator, rudder, ailerons, and so forth can move. Pretty basic stuff. As part of the design and build process for any airplane, whether you're doing it on your own or it's ready to fly, <clears throat> there's a specified amount of distance that the controls have to go, ailerons, rudder, etc. They're usually stated in the plans and the directions for ready to fly, and it's important for a good flying model to have those controls move in not too much direction where you get over control or not enough where there's not sufficient control. With today's computer radios, it is extremely simple to adjust the control throw. Most default settings are 100%. If you want less than that, you just turn it down to 80%. We've all done that with our models. But the question comes, what if you want more than 100%? What if you want extra throw? You're already at the full um, uh, regime of your transmitter. How can you do something to your model to have increase or de decrease control throw mechanically? Back in the days uh, before computer radios and computer transmitters, this is a very common thing that modelers did by adjusting the input hole on the control arm of the servos and the control horn of the control surface to get really quite accurate adjustments to how the control throw is. So what I want to do now is give a demonstration using this little training aid. This is a sample model airplane. We have the wing, the fuselage, tail, the rudder. I have one control surface head up with a rudder just so we can see what's going on, a control rod, and this, if you will, is the servo control arm. So what happens is this control arm is represented by this servo um, servo here with its arm. I've put in the two locations just for the demonstration. And remember, as we use these servos, we can have short control arms or we can have long control arms. There's different size arms you can get to put onto your servo. The same thing for the control horns. Here's another example of two different size control arms that will affect how we do that. So, this will be a little bit complicated when I do it, but it's mathematically and engineering correct with arcs and distances. So I'll go through it. You may have to watch it a second time because it's not intuitive, but let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this. Let's take a look at our training aid for the amount of control throw. So this again is a servo. Pretend this is the middle of the servo. This is how much the servo travels. We'll just pick this amount, which is probably what a servo is going to do, full control throw either way. The way it works at the servo to get maximum throw, the control rod is as far out as possible. To get minimum throw, the control rod is as close to the pivot, the center point of the arm as possible. So again, minimum travel and max travel. Let's take a look at that, at this little diagram here. We have determined the servo is going to, the arm is going to move this much. If the control rod is in this inner hole, it's going to move about half an inch from here to here. So the servo arm will go half an inch back, uh, the control rod will go a half inch back and forth. If it's out here, it's going to be one and a half inches of movement. So you're just going to have more effect on the control surface. And we'll demonstrate that here in a moment. Now, to add to the confusion, when you look at it at the control horn, and again, this is an exaggerated length control horn to see the effect, it is the opposite of the servo. You get minimum control throw as far out as possible and maximum travel of the control surface with the hole as close as possible. So let's take a look at that. Starting here, we'll... Um, go to the servo arm here, and I can just take this in and out. We are going to experiment with the outer hole. That will give us the maximum distance of travel of the control rod. And let's go ahead and put that in the outer hole, which is going to give us the minimum travel at the control surface. So this is the control 
you can see how far that goes by using the whole out um, the outer hole it's probably about 30 degrees now if we take this and put it to the inner hole remember this is going to be the maximum travel and we do the same distance here look at how much it turns here and this is only halfway with the servo arm so we go here and it's only halfway to the servo arm by the same token if we reverse that and we put this in the inner hole and we'll just um, use two minimums so this is let me get this in all right so close is minimum outer is minimum look at how much it turns like this just that much if we put this into the inner hole which is maximum at the control surface look at how much it turns at that point with the same movement of the arm back here so again by understanding where the control holes are in the servo arm and the control surface maximum throw further out minimum in minimum further out maximum to the close uh, closer it's a little bit confusing if you haven't worked with it we did this all the time in the old days before computer radios but that's the way it works this is the fms corsair 30 uh, one and a half inch wingspan a great flying ready to fly take a quick look at the flight of the model um, it flew well on two cells i'm going to experiment with three cells very nice in the air but i didn't have enough elevated control throw so using what we just just described on this thing i'm going to show you how to increase the elevator throw now we're going to open up the fuselage for a second you'll see the control rods are at the furthermost outer portion so it's got the maximum throw at the servo because this is out here so what we have to do is move the control rods in towards the control surface to get the maximum throw this is the airplane you can see that these are the elevator servo notice this is the rudder servo you'll see two rods here it's a pretty good solution what they've done is the reason there are two rods the elevator halves are split back here and you have one control rod to each half they're just ganged up here um, at the front notice the arms are not that long but they're as far out as possible on the servo arm so we have the maximum throw 100 percent of the arms i want more elevator the only way i can do that is by adjusting location of this in the elevator control um, horn so right here this is least amount middle if i move it to this inner hole here remember closest to the control surface that will give you maximum throw and that's what you do with this one with the ready to fly if i want more throw i can put the control horn closer to the control surface because i'm already out as inside the fuselage that way you can get a little bit more elevator throw and i think i'll have a better flying model Thank you for joining me in this video. It's um, a good basic to have with RC, the effect of different locations of the servo arms and the control hone of the surface for adjusting throw of your control services. Good luck with your flights.